morning. Welcome to the First Unitarian Fellowship of Nanaimo. My name is John Sewer, and I am the service leader for today. If this is your first time with us, a very special welcome to you. We invite you to visit our website for more detailed information about who we are, the services we offer, and how you can connect with us. Whatever your ethnicity, theological belief, gender, sexual orientation, age, and everything that makes you who you are, please know that you are warmly welcome in our community. We acknowledge today that we meet on the unceded traditional territory of the Shunamic First Nation. As Unitarians, we commit to the work of reconciliation required to address the harm done to all Indigenous peoples and their cultures by non-Indigenous people. I would now like to move on to announcements. Thank you to Karen Sharp for the lovely flowers that you see this morning. I have four announcements. The first one, following up on the May 30th service on the Canadian Unitarian Council AGM and the vote for an eighth principle, there is an opportunity to join a conversation with fellowship members this coming Wednesday, June 16 at 7 p.m. to discuss the final report of the Dismantling Racism Study Group. You can find the link in the weekly update. Second, there will be a celebration for Leah on Saturday, June 19th at 7 p.m. This is next Saturday and it will be on Zoom. Everyone is invited to an hour of music, heartfelt appreciations, humor, and laughter. Please contact Tony or Reverend Deborah if you have a memory, a tribute, or a roast for Leah. Bring your own nibbles and drinks. To create a festive atmosphere, you are asked to de decorate your Zoom background. Third, mark your calendar for yet another special event. Next Sunday is the last Sunday service until September 12. Hoping for a good weather day and the lowering of pandemic restrictions, we are planning an afternoon picnic in the fellowship parking lot. Make a joyful no noise will begin at 2 p.m. on June 20th. Everyone is invited. Please bring your own drinks and snack foods, musical instruments and fancy hats, along with sun protection, such as umbrellas, hats and sunblock blocks. And oh, lawn chairs too, please. Park, please park across the street so we can use the, our entire parking lot. If you know of anyone who needs a ride, please let Lee's or Reverend Deborah know. And fourth but not least, today is our annual general meeting. It will be at one o'clock. Please use today's service link to get to join us for that. To find out about all special events, groups and meetings taking place in the fellowship, go to the calendar on our website or open the weekly update emails on Thursday. Good morning, John. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see your faces here today. I'm glad that you chose to be with us this morning. 12 years ago, a Nordic blonde musician and singer walked through the doors of the fellowship and asked if a choir was wanted. And when I walked through the doors two years ago, I saw how her ministry of music had brought enormous joy and compassion into this community. The choir came early on a Sunday morning to practice. And the last thing that they did was to gather in a circle and sing a loving kindness prayer to those who needed a blessing or healing energy. Leah's gifts to the community have been many, and I hope everyone can join us on the 19th for the celebration. When Leah told me of her decision to explore new directions in her life, 
I immediately thought of today's service would be hers to do with as she wished. And being the generous soul that she is, she invited me to join her in its creation. I have loved working with Leah and I have loved creating with her. Leah's gift to us, her heart and the heart of her soul is sound, is vibration, is music. So let us enter her world this morning. In this space, we welcome everyone, wherever you have been, whatever you have known, whoever you are. We are all welcome here. Where Everything is Music by Rumi. Don't worry about saving these songs. And if one of our instruments breaks, it doesn't matter. We have fallen into the place where everything is music. The strumming, and the flute notes rise into the atmosphere. And even the whole world's harp, and even if the whole world's harp should burn up, there will still be hidden instruments playing. And so the candle flickers and goes out. We have a piece of flint and a spark. This singing art is sea foam. The graceful movements come from a pearl somewhere on the ocean floor. Poems reach up like spindrift and the edge of driftwood along the beach, wanting. They derive from a slow and powerful root that we can't see. Stop the words now. Open the window in the center of your chest and let the spirit fly in and out.
we are slowed down sound and light waves, a walking bundle of frequencies tuned into the cosmos. We are souls dressed up in sacred biochemical garments and our bodies are the instruments through which our souls play their music. This morning, we light the chalice for the music that lives in everything. Good morning, everyone. Our first song this morning is called The Sound of the Ocean. And this is a song that I wrote a few years ago, or rather it, it, came, it, it came through <laughs> on the beach in Tofino when I was listening to the sound. And thank you, Francis, for putting our words up on the screen. Please, please join in. One of the things that Lee and I have been talking about is that there is sound and mu music everywhere, like in that story, that we can hear the constant of that music, that sound, wherever we are, whoever we are. So I invite you now into a guided meditation into sound. I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable to do so, because sometimes it helps us focus on the other senses other than sight. I invite you to take a deep breath and a long exhale. And let us begin by focusing only on the sounds of the room that you are in. Block out all other sounds, only the sounds of the room you are in. What do you hear?
Now push your listening beyond the room you are in to include the building that you are in. Focus only on the sounds in the building, the house, or the apartment outside the room you are in. What do you hear? And now push your hearing beyond the building, focusing only on the sounds you can hear outside the building. What do you hear? What is the farthest away sound that you hear? And now let us shift our listening to encompass all sounds, the closest sounds and the sounds of the building and way beyond the building. Listen. And now come back to you. Gently shift your focus to only the sounds of you. Air through the nostrils or the mouth. Perhaps you can hear your heartbeat. You and the world are music. Now everything is music. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Leah. Now, don't you worry about saving these songs. And if one of our instruments breaks, it doesn't matter. We have fallen into the place where everything is music. Yeah, where everything's music. What does that mean to you, Leah? Well, I can imagine it in a couple of different ways. It could have a more literal meaning related to sound, like you have been inviting, and that everything we hear can be heard as music, like the sound of the ocean or the sound of birdsong, the sound of the refrigerator. Mine just kicked on. <laughs> <laughs> I also hear these words metaphorically that everything actually is music in a sense. Mm. And I wonder what that means. Mm. Last year, Wiley Fargan from our fellowship, hello Wiley, I hope you're out there. <laughs> Wiley introduced me to the philosophy of David Bohm, specifically Bohm's book, Wholeness and the Implicate Order. We talked about Bohm's definition of wholeness as one continuous and unbroken movement 
and that mind and matter are different aspects of this one whole and unbroken movement. Wiley likened this to music, which I thought was very inspiring, mm -hmm. and I've been thinking about it ever since. So thank you, Wiley, for turning me on to David Bohm. So how about we begin riffing on that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if, like Bohm's definition of wholeness is suggesting, everything is music in the sense that everything is one whole and unbroken movement, the material and the non-material, all like a grand symphony, mm. ever moving and flowing. And like that full range of music in this movement, there's harmony and dissonance. There are single notes and wrong notes and broken instruments. And there's silence and full symphonies. All the experiences of the human journey as music. Yes, or like waves to the ocean. All aspects of life are integral to the whole. As you say, even the dissonances, the challenges, our human frailties, our brokenness. I used to think of wholeness as more of a fixed thing, like an achievement, or at least something to strive for, like I'll be whole when. Mm -hmm. So imagining wholeness as one whole and unbroken movement, like continuous music, somehow invokes a different kind of relationship with life. It's not easy to articulate, I find, but I feel it. You know, I, you're saying that and I'm remembering being very young and sitting in a, the vastness of a church and how I was aware of listening to the fullness of the silence of the building and then then hearing the, the music come in and fill that space, fill that silence. I didn't have words as a child, of course, but now when I think about it, I, was, I think I was listening to that emptiness and fullness of that unbroken movement of the whole. That's beautiful. Well, you're reminding me of when my parents would let us go swimming in Pigeon Lake, Alberta during thunderstorms when I was a kid. The wind would kick up and the waves would get big. Um, it was a prairie lake, so we couldn't get into too much trouble unless we were hit by lightning, <laughs> which never happened, fortunately. <laughs> we would go out into the waves and there was this feeling, just crashing into them and flowing with them. And like you say, this sense of being taken up with something bigger, surrendering to that space the feelings, the sensations, and the sounds. Yeah, the sounds of our lives. Not just the backdrop of our lives, but it's like, it's integral to our lives. It's, it's forming us, it's shaping us, teaching us. Leah, your, your whole work that I've known of and your passion has been focused on sound. So I'm wondering, about sound, what it is about sound that particularly engages you? Well, I really like what you say about sound being integral to our lives and not just a backdrop or a soundtrack. <laughs> For starters, I, I find that when I'm making sound or listening to it, it helps to quiet my chattery mind. It helps me enter a meditative state. Perhaps it's simply the nature of sound, that it moves and flows in time. And when I'm in sound, both listening and making sound, I'm also in the present movement, as writer Jeff Foster calls it. I prefer that to present moment, which again sounds kind of fixed to me. Mm -hmm. In sound, I'm riding the waves of present movement. I also think that our sound sense lends itself to a particular kind of relationship with our environment, one that I feel is rooted in reciprocity. Hmm. Can you tease out what you mean by reciprocity? Well, I can't really control the sounds that surround me. 
I can cover my ears and maybe control it to some extent that way, but I can't block out sound entirely. Sound also comes from as close as my breath or heartbeat, like you invited us in in the meditation, and as far away as a distant fairy horn and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so this combination of where I experience sound in space, both inner and outer, and the fact that I really can't control it means that on some level, I have to accept it into my moment to moment reality. Mm -hmm. And if you allow the world to be itself and to not control it, then you're allowing the world to affect you. Mm -hmm. I think so. And I think we're trying to control more and more aspects of our lives. And our ever evolving technologies create the illusion that we have more and more control. Right. So if we put down our cell phones and open up to the sounds of the world, we gain connection. We don't know what it will be. It could be something that pushes me off my center, or it could also be something that opens up my heart larger than it's ever been before to a greater love. For me, that's what reciprocity is. It's that it's the give and take. The price we pay, I think, for cutting ourselves off is disconnection from the flow of life. Yeah, I, I think that what we attempt to control can cut us off from our immediate environment and our interconnectedness with it. And I think this interconnectedness is also reflected in our capacity to make sound. We are both listeners and we are sound makers. Mm -hmm. We talk, we sing, chant, hum, play a musical instrument. And we can do all this with conscious intention. So there again is that inherent reciprocity, I feel, that is within the realm of sound. So that reminds me of playing vocally with others, making sound together, and the, the creative impulse that kind of like moves through a group that are playing with sound. My experience is that when the group of people, they let go of their individual need to be in control and follow the creative impulse together that moves through the sound, there comes a moment when the sounds all connect and they become something or it becomes something brand new and whole. It's a qualitatively different experience than just a bunch of different individual sounds. And usually everybody, when it happens, recognizes that that shift has happened. Can you, you know, creative impulse, can you talk about creative impulse for you? Well, I, I think it's, as you say, it seems a lot rides on giving up control and allowing space for what wants to come through creatively. If I can suspend judgment or give my inner critic a holiday <laughs> and go with the moment or with the movement, even something I might construe as wrong can, as you say, be an opportunity for something new. Mm -hmm. It's the yes and approach. And it's not easy sometimes for a control freak like me. <laughs> Rumi wrote, out beyond ideas of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field, meet me there. Hmm. I love that. It's what you're naming the yes and. When I'm able to release myself, from that dualism of broken or whole, from right or wrong, I feel free. I can simply accept what is happening. And I think as a creative artist, you have, well, I imagine that you have to have that freedom in order to create. Yeah, and, and I think this yes and approach that is so essential to the creative process, it also invites an approach to living or an attitude toward life that is yes and as well. 
And I like what you say about accepting what is, what is actually happening in this moment, or again, in this movement. Mm -hmm. So all of the movements or the music of our lives, all are included in wholeness rather than compartmentalized deviations from wholeness. Mm -hmm. In other words, they can be held with curiosity and with compassion. Mm. I know that too. I'm going to shift gears a little bit here, Leah, because I'm curious about um, the chants that you've created over the years. Can you talk a little bit about chants, where they come from, and perhaps the chants in relationship to that quote, the David Bohm quote, that wholeness is a piece of music? Well, the chant tradition, which is a vast ocean in and of itself, is something I never really appreciated until a few years ago when I was in Europe. Mm -hmm. I spent many months wandering around by myself and as a source of comfort, really, I started singing some of my favorite ecstatic poems mm -hmm. from Rumi and Hafiz and Hildegard of Bingen and others. And I discovered that this helped me stay grounded and present while I was feeling quite vulnerable out in the big world and helped me to understand that no matter what my life circumstances bring, singing these simple hip pocket tunes, as I like to call them, help me access transcendent states or wholeness states, truly anytime, anywhere. From that experience, I started writing them down and recording them into my phone. And when I got back, the fabulous Fufonics helped me workshop many of them, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, fabulous Fufonics. <laughs> I really like that. So these hip pocket tunes are portals for you into a greater reality. I smile even, you know, just imagining you pulling an ecstatic chant out of your pocket and entering a transcendent state as you wander down cobble streets in Europe. <laughs> you know, it brings all these esoteric ideas of wholeness and presence into this down to earth everyday reality experience and that's what i need in order to understand these esoteric esoteric ideas i need that sort of concrete firsthand experience i really enjoy doing chants because i can feel the vibrations resonating in my jaw in my nose in my cheekbones in my chest mm. Well, yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yes, and as mystics and scientists alike have said, everything is always vibrating, always wiggling, moving. And I think what you're describing is how vibration affects matter, in this mm -hmm. case, your own body. Yeah, and I can feel the vibration um, raising the energy in my body. And it makes, or I, I, I begin to feel like more alert and more alive. Well, even when we vibrate with a simple hum, <laughs> we are affecting the body in a surprisingly powerful way. Mm -hmm. And the healing benefits are well researched from reducing stress hormones to increasing oxygen in our cells to lowering blood pressure and heart rate. The list goes on. I remember you talking about the vagus nerve in a service a while back and you called it something. The soul nerve. Yes, when we hum, we activate the vagus nerve or the soul nerve. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> Say, Deborah. Yes. How about we invite everyone? <laughs> how about we invite everyone into a short humming meditation? I think that'd be great. Okay. So hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so I'd like to invite you all into a short humming meditation. And um, if you like, you can close your eyes if that feels right for you. And we'll just take a moment. 
I invite you to feel the chair under you and the ground under your feet. Take a moment and listen to the sound of your breath. Listen to the sound of your inhale and the sound of your exhale. And let your belly soften. Feel your breath moving down into your belly. And then in your next breath, I invite you into a hum. So whatever sound wants to come. And keep that going for about a minute. So let yourself breathe when you need to and then go back into a hum and feel where the hum is vibrating in your body. Do one more. And then return to listening to the sound of your breath. your eyes have been closed, I invite you to open them. And I invite you to write how you feel into the chat, if some of you would like to do that. What was that like for you, Deborah? <laughs> uh, it felt buzzy. I got tingles and uh, tickles all through my face. Um, and I feel kind of filled with oxygen and a little bit spacey here. <laughs> Maybe a little bit giggly. Um, I understand what you mean by uh, being present. Like I, I said, I'm spacey, but I'm also very aware of it. Um, very present to the sound and the vibration, my body, all of you, the room here where I am. And I am experiencing it as it, it's, not as separate pieces, but all at the same time, all a wholeness. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm, or I'm noticing in the chat words like calm and peaceful and relaxed and watery and full, serene, present, the sound of silence. So thank you, those of you that put those in the chat. Um, and I, I too feel a, a sense of calm and peacefulness after a humming meditation. And as you say, I kind of feel more present to everything, to my body, to, yeah, just to everything. And I'm finding uh, that I'm, I'm grounded in myself and more open, I think. I think I'm listening better. I'm not putting so much effort into it. I feel more connected. I think my my capacity to be present to others rests in that grounded presence with myself. Mm. I like that. Yeah, a grounded presence within myself. Mm. And we sure can feel it when someone is present to us, can't we? Mm -hmm. And it can have little to do with what the person is actually saying, but rather it's in how the person is speaking. Mm -hmm. The music of their voice, its melody, its rhythm, tempo. Uh, yeah, and it's in body language too. You know, we pick up or read, feel all those vibrational waves that are moving through space and within us and between us. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking between us, I do want to say, Deborah, that I experience this quality of calm presence in you when we speak. And I think this is one of the many gifts you give to us and to the world. Thank you, Leah. I'm back at you. <laughs> I would say your presence is a vibration of uh, delight. And I love it when you share that playfulness and gentleness with us. You remind me, and maybe others too, or your presence reminds us of our own lightness. Mm -hmm. And maybe to be just a little bit more serious, being in your presence, Leah, I notice, you help me notice the wholeness in me, the wholeness in us, the wholeness in the whole world. Thank you, Deborah, and it's mutual. And I'm reminded again of the reciprocity we were speaking of earlier. And what I experience in relationship brings me back to the reciprocity between the listener and the music of the world. Mm -hmm. And when I think about this, I'm reminded that we have much to learn from ind indigenous cultures when it comes to a reciprocal relationship with the more than human world. So I love the experience of reciprocity within my human relationships and connections. And I love the expansion of that reciprocity in the wider sense of the world. Mm -hmm which we can be reminded of whenever we're out in the world, especially in nature, and take the time to really listen to the gorgeous symphony of creaturely song surrounding us at any given moment. Mm -hmm. In a way, our listening gives them voice. Mm -hmm. And we may want to add our own sounds too, <laughs> like, Shall we invite everybody to join us and make some sounds? <laughs> a joyful noise. <laughs> yes, this is a mute optional. So if you want to unmute and make some sounds, go for it. Okay. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, where do we go from here, Leah? <laughs> Anywhere you want. <laughs> to sum up, we've covered a lot of ground. <laughs> from the Scottish philosopher David Bohm's definition of wholeness as the one continuous and unbroken movement, and how this is like music, and how this wholeness includes the sum of each person's experience and their vibrations. Yeah, we've talked about presence and how sound and music and listening are portals through which presence arises and how this experience can inform our presence with one another and with the world. And how that creative impulse moves through that wholeness no wrong notes in this world music yes and sister yes and <laughs> thank you thank you leah thank you for today and thank you for the last 12 wonderful years you've been so generous with sharing yourself your creativity your passion, your love of life with this community. And today you've given us some profound insights into the real and present mystery of sound and music. Well, thank you, Deborah, for the invitation to share and jumping into the wonderful sound sandbox with me. <laughs> And I also want to thank Francis and John and Lise and Sybil and Tony for your contributions to the service today. And thank you. My beloved Fufon community for listening and for 12 years of music and connection and joy. And now I'm going to try to sing our next, <laughs> our next song. <laughs> well, while you're doing that, I just, I can hear, and I'm not making this an invitation, but I just know that the Fufonics and everyone else in the community is sending their vibrations of love and joy and tenderheartedness your way right now. Okay, so what are we going to sing? We're going to sing, <laughs> we're going to sing um, a, a chant that I wrote a, a couple of years, well, I guess about a little over a year ago, and it's called Wholeness. And um, I'm going to put on a little recording because it's, because it has a bit of grooviness to it. <laughs> And, uh, and I invite you to sing along, and um, this is also, a, uh, you can sing along in a call and response kind of way, if that's, if that's more comfortable. Here we go. Body is flow. 
Our closing words this morning are by poet Mary Oliver, such singing in the wild branches. It was spring and I finally heard him among the first leaves. Then I saw him clutching the limb in an island of shade with his red brown feathers all trim and neat for the new year. First, I stood still and thought of nothing. Then I began to listen. Then I was filled with gladness and that's when it happened when I seemed to float, to be myself a wing or a tree. And I began to understand what the bird was saying. And the sands in the glass stopped for a pure white moment, while gravity sprinkled upward like rain rising. And in fact, it became difficult to tell just what it was that was singing. It was the thrush for sure, but it seemed not a single thrush, but himself and all his brothers, and also the trees around them, as well as the gliding long-tailed clouds in the perfectly blue sky. All, all of them were singing. And of course, yes, so it seemed, so was I. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now you're all invited to switch to gallery view and imagine we are standing in a big circle, holding hands and we'll sing our closing song carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Then we shall see a world of light and a world of joy. Carry the flame.